Let's try and go across to Dr. Peter Hotez, vaccine scientist, uh, Dean uh, National School of Tropical Medicine at the Baylor College of Medicine. And uh, they've been working very closely in developing another vaccine, which is, should also uh, be there uh, available very, very soon. Dr. Mufazal Lak Lakrawala, founder, uh, Digestive Health Institute and Chairman Institute of Minimal Access Surgical Sciences and Research Center. Dr. Mufi, uh, it's good to have this conversation with you. Uh, let's first start with Dr. Peter Hotez. Dr. Hotez. Is India going the right way as far as the vaccination drive is concerned? Prioritizing age groups, prioritizing the critical districts, and then it, uh, you know uh, the pace of the vaccine. How do you start? How do you see it compared to other nations? Well, I think you know there, there's there's a lot of complexity there, but but India is doing two things that are very important. One, they are looking after their own people and ensuring that the country gets fully vaccinated. The other piece to this that we haven't spoken about yet is the fact that now the world is relying on India to supply vaccines for the world. And that's a really important role for India. So maybe we can talk about that today as well. But the, the first to answer your first question, you know, I think what we're seeing now is clearly to interrupt virus transmission, which is ultimately the goal to, pre to prevent deaths and hospitalizations, but also to halt virus transmission. Mm with the new variants we're going to need about 80 percent of the population of india vaccinated so that's an enormous undertaking right you're talking about 800 uh, million people vaccinated and from our experience the the less fussy and rigid the criteria are the the easier it is to start doing that because making creating rigid criteria in themselves can be barriers for access so eventually it will get opened up but i understand the process at this point Hmm. But, but Dr. Mufi, uh, you know, as Peter Hotez says, India has a responsibility of supplying to the world too. There is a lot of debate internally saying that we should target at least 5 million doses uh, per day. And if that is the case, then we need to stop export and uh, continue to either import vaccines and also uh, look at our own production and our own need. Like many other nations have stockpiled, we should also build up a stockpile. Where do you stand there? I think... Uh, yeah, I think, you know... You're going to have to do both, unfortunately, and it's a tall order, mm. but but I think it's doable uh, because now, you, you remember, remember the contribution here. You have Serum Institute of India producing the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. You have uh, Barat uh, producing uh, their inactivated virus vaccine now with the uh, Russian uh, Sputnik V vaccine will be produced locally, and we're working with Biological E to scale up production of a low-cost recombinant protein vaccine, and they have the capacity to produce 1.2 billion doses. So in time, this problem will smooth out, so that we'll be able to vaccinate both India and, and the rest of the world. Mm. Uh, it's a tall order, but I, I think you're capable of it. Right. Dr. Hotez, please stay with me. Dr. Lakrawala. Uh, hi, Anna. Uh, well, India produced the largest number of vaccines, so it was just natural that we would have to be part of the vaccine maitri uh, drive that the Honorable Prime Minister said, and of course, he uh, feed our stock to the poorer nation. However, we also remain the most populous country, one of the most populous countries in the world. We've got 1.3 billion and counting. So can we vaccine? Can we do both together? Well, right now, it's a tough balancing act that the Prime Minister is probably handling, and I wouldn't want to be in his shoes. But having said that, the, the time is that, yes, we need to vaccinate as many people as we want. 800 million people is how much we need to vaccinate. We've done right. We've vaccinated the high-end groups, like the frontline workers. We've done the 60-plus. We've done the 45-plus now. It's time that we start opening it up. The more we get doses, we've, I think we've been a little reactive rather than proactive in getting in foreign vaccines. Mm. I think we've, we've probably missed a step there. And we should have gotten more players because it takes its point of time before they are available. We do know that Sputnik has now been approved, but it will take at least a month and we've got only 1 million doses to begin with. And to build up to 810 million doses that they promised will take up to the end of the year. Right. This is a war going at super pace. I think we need to keep up pace with that. True, very rightly said. Let's just quickly get a quick check of the vaccines which are still there on the pipeline, which we are expecting in India very soon. How soon is the question? The criticality is on the timelines, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what uh, you know the medical experts are saying. Zykov by Zydus Cadilla is expected by May, June 2021. Uh, this is a three-dose vaccine. Then you have uh, Novavax, which is by the Serum Institute. It's expected to launch by September 2021. And then the final state trials are also currently underway. Johnson & Johnson, uh, uh, 
uh, this is biological E to enter in India a few months and to produce about 60 crore doses. There are some concerns about the J&J vaccine that's been raised in the US. Uh, they will have to tide over all of that too to produce uh, uh, 60 crore doses. Then you have the intranasal vaccine which will also come in. That's by Bharat Biotech that creates an immune response in the nose to begin human trials. Uh, it is set to begin uh, clinical trials and human trials. Then you have the HEC 019 by the Genova Biopharmaceuticals. It's India's first uh, mRNA vaccine that is set to begin clinical trials too. So uh, a lot of the vaccines are currently under the pipeline. But let me go back to Dr. Peter Hotez and Dr. Mufazal Lak Lakrawala and ask them this. Should the Covaxin and Covishield, which are currently available, be opened up to the age groups, uh, say 25 plus, 25 to 40, Dr. Peter Hotez? Because somewhere across the world, there aren't many nations that are vaccinating everybody from, say, 20 plus or 25 plus. Well, what we're learning is if you're serious about actually halting virus transmission, you will have to vaccinate uh, the young adults. Uh, mm. It's clear that they're responsible for uh, quite a bit of virus transmission. But, you know, the good news is you're preparing a, lots of vaccines and lots of different types of vaccines as well. I should mention our recombinant protein mm. vaccine with biological E uh, hopefully will be uh, ready by the summer. Uh, so that's also and that may be one of the easiest to scale up and produce uh, of, of all of them. Mm. So you're going to have an, an adequate supply of vaccine. I'm, I'm fairly confident soon enough. But the other point I would like to make is I was listening to your words and, and taking a step back and listening to this and realize that the, con the conversation you just had, uh, the dialogue you just had, no other country in the world is having that kind of discussion. The depth and breadth of the different vaccines mm. and the amount of vaccines. This is truly an extraordinary accomplishment. And, and I know India is in crisis right now, but it, it sh the country should also be willing to take a step back and look at the enormity of what it's doing. And it, it is impressing me. It's certainly impressing the world, I think. Mm. Yes, 12 crore vaccination is something we should be proud of. But the fact is we need to pick up the pace. And Dr. Lagrawala, let me ask you this. Uh, uh, this criticality is by May, June. Many believe by May, June, we will be able to achieve 50 million doses. Uh, every day we should be able to get to that pace we are uh, we are doing at about we are, we're looking at about 27 million doses that's the average right now with the t -cult, so we did about uh, sorry uh, yeah we, we we did about 4 million doses 2.7 million doses 4 million doses and we should look at 5 million doses average per day that's what i was uh, looking at but in terms of opening up covaxin and covishield to 25 plus or should we wait for the sputnik numbers to come through uh, if I wear my hat as a scientist and as a surgeon, I would say, let's open it up to everybody. Okay. Yeah, that's what my need and want would be. But if I were to be realistic, yes, let's target the population first that needs it most because they're higher end. Unfortunately, what this second wave has taught us, Anand, is that the majority of the people who are getting infected are between the ages of 25 to 45 because the lockdowns are over, people are going to work, yes. and it's but natural that they'll pick up. So. Can you, of course, only vaccinate this group in the high-end areas, which are which are mostly suffering from this vaccine? Maybe there's a thought there, mm. of course, India. Mm. But what do you think is the solution? See, because we have limited number of doses. The data also very clearly shows that it was the top 10 states that carried about 80% of the load in wave one. It's a similar, so seven or eight of the states are the same states which are carrying about 75% of the load this time around. Out of 720 plus districts in our country, 130 districts carried about 85% of the case load. And those are the 130 districts in that the red zones where the vaccination is, the doses have also been pushed and the vaccination drive has been pushed. So how do we deal with this? Because there is, it's, it's ginormous, you know, our population, the base, the spread. The, let me start with Dr. Lakrawala and then I'll take this to Dr. Hotez. Anand, though we've been one of the fastest and we are proud at being the, the country which has vaccinated the maximum number of people, unfortunately, we also deal with the largest number of people. And I think where we are let down is by the people themselves. I think by their attitude and behavior. The, you played a clip of the Prime Minister saying yeah. that please maintain social distancing. We are not out of the woods yet, guys. I mean, we need to maintain that. Even if the vaccine's here, we need to give the vaccine a chance to act, to populate as many number of people. If not two doses, at least one dose, so that they are more protected from severe disease from hospitalizations. I think we are letting ourselves down. Hmm. True. Dr. Otez, do you believe lockdowns are going to help break the chain or making compliance towards COVID appropriate behavior is the one that's going to break the chain? Because we can't afford well, to play these musical chairs with lockdown. Really. 
it hurts. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, the one thing to keep in mind is if you're if the goal is to interrupt virus transmission through vaccination, that's a pretty high bar. So you're not going to see an impact on vaccinations in terms of transmission uh, for quite a while. Let me give you an example. Uh, and if you look at the different states in the U.S., the state of New Hampshire hmm. has now given a single dose of vaccine to 60 percent of its residents, and the numbers are still going up. So you really have to hit very high marks in terms of if you're going to interrupt transmission through vaccination. So all you can do are the non-pharmaceutical interventions, uh, hmm. the social distancing and the masks, and that has to be the emphasis. I think the way you do this is you uh, send the message to the to the people of India that we will be able to vaccinate our way out of this. We have a lot to look forward to um, and towards the latter part of, of this year. It's just a matter of getting everybody to the other side of the rainbow and, and not uh, losing lives of, of loved ones. Mm. That's one point. I think another important point is with these new variants, it's behaving in a different way. So in, initially, as we all know, as more older individuals and those with underlying uh, comorbidities, but now we're starting to see here in the U.S. due to the variants, younger people getting hospitalized and getting sick, and that message mm. has to get through as well. So, so the, the bottom line is good news uh, towards the end of the year, but we're still going to have a rough next few weeks mm. until we can fu fully ramp up and vaccinate. Yeah, th th that's exactly, I think, most of the experts are saying. But is there a critical number in terms of percentage where we should look at uh, in terms of stage-wise opening up the age groups? Dr. Hotez, is there a science to that? 60 plus, 45 plus, then 30 plus or 25 plus. What should be the critical number uh, that one should look at, especially when you're looking at a size of population that is like India? Well, I think, you know, the number one priority has to be to save lives and also protect hospital workers. And, and that's what we did in the U.S. So it was mostly older residents, older individuals. But from then on, um, the, the less fussy and the, less, uh, the more liberalized you can make your criteria, the easier it is to do this in a high throughput way. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, India may have some unique uh, situation that I'm not aware of, but following that approach, the idea would be to finish vaccinating o older, uh, older people uh, and then uh, the hospital, and of course the hospital workers, and then liberalize it and make it as easy and breezy mm. as you can at that point. Mm. But here's the question, uh, Dr. Mufi. The thing is, the moment you open it up to say anybody above 30 plus, or anybody even above 35 plus, you are then opening up the base to about 40 crore people. So that means you need to have vaccine supply of at least 15 to 20 crore doses before you open that up. Otherwise, we're going to have a rush. And again, it's going to create another kind of an issue where everybody will crib about no vaccine doses available. Yes, I know. That's why it's a very, very uh, tough uh, balancing act to follow. I think the problem also is uh, what you will see is that the second wave, you're getting a lot of younger and kids infected as well. Hmm. In fact, if you look at Mumbai, out of the 12, uh, out of the number of cases, 12,800 odd 